What are we going to do as a church? Our souls need to wake up. We need to respond to the gospel of Jesus. He said, go into the world. We don't want to deal with reality, Christian. We don't even want to deal with reality even though we've been saved from this place. I'm calling on you today in the name of Jesus to rise up to the call of God. Christ is coming back soon. If I start telling people about hell, I might just scare them off. Where are you going to scare them off to? Hell number two? People stop and think about it. If hell really exists, and it does, I didn't say that Jesus did, then don't you think people need to know about it? Can't you at least give them a fighting chance? Or are you just going to sit there and let them burn? This is Chris from Don't Let Them Burn. Welcome to our program, Don't Let Them Burn Presents Paranormal Shift, Episode 1. I hope you're enjoying the new segment so far. And for those that haven't heard yet, check out Apocalypse News and Updates and also Reign of the Tech. So this is another segment. In this program, we will discuss everything from the spiritual realm occult activities, and weird paranormal phenomena to give you a context through the lens of the Holy Bible. Before we get into the meat of tonight's subject, I would like to remind you to visit us at DontLetThemBurn.com. You can also follow us on social media and also give this video a like and share. If you haven't subscribed as yet, please do so because we have a ton of information coming your way in the following months that you don't want to miss. There are also other ways of supporting this podcast in the links below. Today, I'm presenting an article by Carol Matriciana. She posted this article on Facebook in May 2016 before she passed away. For those that aren't familiar with Carol's work, she ran a production company that produced popular Christian films and documentaries like Gods of the New Age, Yoga Uncoiled, Halloween Trick or Treat, Wide is the Gate, Pagan Invasion, and Harry Potter Witchcraft Repackage, just to name a few. There's also some books there, too. If you would like to know more, check out Carol Productions and Jeremiah Films. I'll put those links below as well. I'm sure you'll be pleased with what you'll find. I viewed many of these films around 2007 and on, and they helped me understand a whole cornucopia of events that went on before I came into this world and onward. Carol also grew up in India and became a Christian later on in her life. I said all that to say this. Carol had first-hand experience and knowledge about Hinduism and the gurus and godmen behind the religion that had direct contact with spiritual beings. So you can find this information also in her documentary, Gods of the New Age. If you didn't know, yoga is Hinduism and the two cannot be separated. They are one and the same. That's what the gurus proclaim. Yoga means to yoke with the spirits, to become one with them. There's more, but we will cover these topics over time, Lord willing. I'm not reading or reproducing this article for any monetary gain, only to present the information to those who want to learn and those who are totally ignorant of the facts. Besides that, this will also equip you to open a dialogue with the lost and share the gospel message. So, with all of that, let's jump into today's topic, Pilates. The name of the article is called Pilates and Yoga and More. This article is slightly edited by myself, Chris Taylor, for grammatical errors only. This reading is not again for monetary gain. From here on is everything written in the article. I've had several emails asking about Pilates as a form of exercise and if it's connected to spirituality, as yoga is. While on the subject of exercise-related questions, I've also addressed some of your inquiries about worship music, accompanying fitness programs, mind control, and focused breathing practices, tapping into oneness and God power, holistic ideology, and God-glorifying exercise videos and fitness programs. A lot of topics, so let's begin with Pilates. Pilates gets his name from its originator and founder, German-born Joseph Pilates. It's a workout program incorporating many elements he drew from his studies into Eastern yoga and Zen philosophies and Western Roman and Greek forms of physical fitness. He called his regimen Controlology, 
which he claims is the science of control and borrowed some basics from Hinduism yoga, which is foundational to Hinduism's religious philosophy. Similar to yogic practice, Pilates emphasizes the importance of focused breathing patterns and intense concentration and mind control as integral to the Pilates regime. Exercises are given names like elephant and swan, much like yoga positions or asanas have names like camel, cat, and cobra. I realize this can sound like hair splitting. What's wrong with giving names to exercises and emphasizing mind concentration? Well, is mind concentration really physical exercise? Is self-hypnosis and visualization part of physical well-being? Physical and mental lines are getting blurred as a body-mind-spirit ideology is accepted as legitimate. Hinduism claims yoga is a science, which becomes confusing as the true meaning of true science is being redefined. Its original function is the systematic study of the physical and natural through control, observation, and experiment. When a philosophy or mind control technique claims to be scientific, it shifts the true meaning to now embrace the subjective study of a philosophy based on metaphysical and supernatural aspects which must, by definition, be open to another type of observation into the spirit world and spirits and their behavior which can't be controlled. For further explanation about shift in science and its behavioral ramifications to society, read my book, The Evolution Conspiracy. Yoga's basic premise is that focused breathing patterns are essential for both physical and spiritual well-being, and the benefits of breathing correctly can be used to invoke better wellness all around, physically and spiritually. Invoke, obviously, is a type of prayer and appeal to the spirit world, which brings with it powers and experiences which, from a biblical point of view, comes with dangers because their source is corrupt. Within Eastern thinking, such invocations to the spirit world are of good advantage and beneficial. Eastern philosophy teaches the mind must vacate the body or stop thinking, still the mind, go into neutral for the spirit within to be awakened. The Bible teaches the mind must be harnessed to God's word for protection against spirits who want to take possession of the body and the heart must be guarded for the same reason. While obviously breathing correctly when doing physical exercise, its importance is only for bodily physical results. Breathing correctly is not essential for any type of spiritual gain within a biblical worldview. Mentioned in the Bible, in Genesis, God breathed his breath into Adam and gave Adam God's everlasting spirit. But everlasting life cannot be enhanced by correct physical breathing. The Bible separates the spirit from the soul and the body. Paul explains, bodily exercise avails temporary value but isn't of benefit for eternal life. Obviously, implying breathing exercises are of no spiritual benefit whatsoever. Eastern spirituality believes the opposite. It teaches that Brahman is an overall impersonal God consciousness which can be tapped into through certain breathing exercises in various bodily positions. Asanas like camel, cat, and cobra. Hinduism teaches everything is interconnected and the powers and say the cobra can be transformed into the practitioner when engaged in that asana. So cobra and practitioner became one. The snake is revered in every pagan culture, but spoken against in the Bible as a deceiver, a liar, and a destroyer. These practices, breathing and positioning, are taught in the art of yoga, which believes body, soul, and spirit are one. In other words, body, soul, and spirit cannot be separated, as many in the West try to explain that there is a yoga purely for the physical body only and a yoga for the spiritual. All yoga is based 
in an Eastern worldview and is for body, mind, and spirit. The mind is important to control and be used for spiritual indoctrination by the spirit beings invoked through bodily positioning. It is very subtle and very powerful. In Sanskrit, yoga means to unite body, soul, and spirit to another larger spirit energy that Hinduism says is a divinity called Brahman. Yoga practice is the method to promote in the practitioner the idea to connect to or tap into Brahman, also understood to be the higher self. Yoga teaches that the higher self is self-awareness, and the promotion of true self comes through awareness of one's own divinity. Through altered states while involved in breathing techniques which supposedly induce self-actualization, in other words, the idea of realizing one's own godhood or connection to the higher self expands spiritual consciousness in general. Amazingly, a type of Christianized breathing technique is being introduced to Christians and into churches through a practice called breath prayer, which, can, which some Christian leaders are promoting claiming it makes the practitioner get closer to or more intimate with God. This is not based on biblical teaching, but rather draws from the heretical teachings of Christian mystics and the Desert Fathers. This philosophy that man can connect to divinity or become God is rooted in paganism that teaches man and energy, the material environment, and all in the universe et al. is part of one life-giving substance, which is divinity and God consciousness and can be tapped into for gain. So all is divine. God is all. God is in all and all is in God. This quote unquote God is an impersonal force and not a personal divinity, as the Bible explains the creator God to be. The Judeo-Christian God is a personal being who was from eternal to everlasting. He is separate to energy, separate to anything material, and separate to man, who he created out of nothing, from invisible to invisible, by the power of his word. Through his spirit, man cannot become a god or be divine. In addition, the Bible teaches man should, should die to self, diminish in self-ambition, self-motivation, self-esteem, self-actualization, etc., Contrary to Eastern philosophy that promotes the idea of elevating self to connect to its so-called higher God center, the Bible says in Jeremiah, there is no good thing within man whose heart is deceptively wicked. Yet Hinduism says within man is the potential of discovering his own godhood. This was the lie of Satan perpetuated when he deceived Eve with the notion she could be like God. Bettering one's health through any practice based in a worldview of, or philosophy that borrows from Eastern mysticism endangers its, itself because it blends physical and spiritual. Physical exercise can be rooted in a biblical worldview or it strays into Hindu philosophy and paganism. Physical exercise should be rooted in a biblical worldview or it strays into Hindu philosophy and paganism. The latter has the potential of being contaminated with what the Bible defines as supernatural spirits, defined as demons and wicked powers and principalities of darkness. Breath prayer is a good example of spiritual wickedness and contamination able to beguile undiscerning Christians. Joseph Pilates' worldview, borrowed from Eastern spirituality, makes his technique of particular concern to those calling themselves Christians, as it has the potential of introducing practitioners to ideas of holism, holistic thought, wholeness, oneness, all is one, etc., and lead them into unwittingly becoming sympathetic towards Eastern philosophy, yoga, and other eclectic ideas that may trip up naive Christians who are not well-grounded in sound doctrine. At best, they become spiritually contaminated and open to demonic influences. At worst, they fall away from biblical faith and lose their soul. 
While many Pilates teachers may argue they don't teach Eastern spirituality just as many yoga teachers do, the basic premise of both body wellness programs is part of Eastern philosophy. Any program intertwining the human mind, spirit, and body, or mental, spiritual, and physical health claiming they are interrelated should raise a warning flag. The concept of body, mind, and spirit is integral to holistic ideology and not based on authentic science. The likes carry dangers of confusion and blurs biblical truth. Many people have written to me asking me to recommend a God-glorifying exercise video or relaxation-based fitness program. I know of no such videos or programs. Their questions fall into a difficult one to answer because videos on or health programs for relaxation and stretching and exercise, in my opinion, are incompatible. Relaxation is opposed to a rigorous, healthy exercise. Any type of body stretching exercise is good, especially um, if one concentrates on what muscles they are used. Gymnastics exercise is good for the body. A ballet teacher is able to teach good body stretches or a personal physical trainer is able to lead a group in good healthy body workouts. But the moment a teacher asks one to go within the mind into a mental visualization technique and imagine one's breath going in one nostril and out the other or asked to control one's mind or breathing or relax one's mind to think of nothingness or alleviate stress through mental techniques, then the body exercise changes from stretching and physical exercise to a type of mental gymnastics, using a type of self-hypnosis to bring about a altered state of consciousness. This then introduces another agenda. Eastern mind relaxation demands that the mind be brought to an emptying. The Bible teaches the mind should be harnessed at all times. For instance, it teaches to love the Lord your God with all your mind. The mind is Satan's target to bring about contrary thinking to biblical precepts. The Bible acts for our minds to be united with the mind of Christ. Some have asked me if playing worship music while exercising is okay. That's a personal preference. I will say, some fitness programs do incorporate worship music into their sessions. For me, the original intent of worship music is to help the worshiper worship God. To use this worship music as a foreground to an exercise class for me would be a distraction. I don't fully understand the point of this type of fusion as it creates uh, neither a good worship atmosphere nor a good bodily workout time. I feel one is sacrificed for the other. I personally find it difficult to keep my mind on a bodily workout with all it entails with full concentration while listening to the lyrics of music intended to lift up God in a worshipful way. One seems to corrupt the other as the mind is hostile to the spirit. I'm sure there are those who argue that they can indulge in both with the same fervor. I can't. Give me a razzmatazz beat filled music accompaniment to my exercise regime any old time. One inquiry wanted me to recommend a fitness video for elderly wheelchair bound and handicapped persons who were being given a yoga class in their senior facility, seriously teaching the vulnerable a religious worldview under the guise of keeping supple. What a tragic predicament. I wonder if these same faculties which offer yoga introductions ever give the option of a solid Bible study class for their spirit and physical health regime for their needy bodies. Ultimately, a customized fitness program would be the best answer in this type of circumstance. I do pray a compassionate physical fitness teacher who loves the elderly would be able to offer their talents to this facility with a well-rounded exercise workout not contaminated with pagan ideology. As a postscript, personally, having practiced authentic yoga when I was a New Ager, I wonder how on earth any wheelchair-bound handicapped person could possibly, firstly, comply with the extremes yoga position demands, and secondly, how could they benefit physically? Sadly, unbeknownst to many, the only agenda yoga offers is a spiritual one, ultimately, the practitioner has their spirit familiarized with westernized 
Hinduism. This ends the reading of the article. And a couple notes. Um, I'm not sure if she was alluding to losing your salvation there, um, because if if you're a Christian, you can't lose your salvation. Um, if you if you've uh, left Jesus, denied the Father, denied the Son, you were never really a Christian anyway. And um, that's found in First um, John. Also, um, yeah, as she mentioned there, the coming to the realization that you are God, right? This is, this is also mentioned in what's called the 5% movement, the 5 percenters. A lot of these people are, are in the hip-hop mu- movement, and uh, it's called knowledge of self. Um, they also go into this thing where um, arm, leg, leg, arm, head, you are Allah, you are God. And I, I, although I don't believe Allah is, is the true God of the Bible or the universe, uh, this, this is what they believe that you know, when you get knowledge of self, you you now know that you're a god. They call themselves the gods in the earth, and this this is you know, it's echoed in many false religions. So, I just wanted to put that out there. A few more things that I want to point out is that Hindus and other f- pagan religions they worship animals, and if you go into Romans one, you'll find, you know, they worship the created things instead of the creator. So dig into Romans 1, and you'll find out um, what's going on there. So it's very important. You'll find that the wrath of God is coming to the planet partially because of the Romans 1 mentality. And so as this world continues on in its sin, the wrath of God is storing up. Uh, If you look at the, the last King Kong film, it was all about viewing King Kong as a god. It's the same idea behind Godzilla. Maybe not the original intent. I'm not sure about that. But in the new film, that's basically what the premise is. So anyway, um, also the Brahmin. And when you hear this term in your movies and in your workplace about the universe, the universe is granting me this and all that. uh, Star Wars, you know, that's the Brahmin, the the force. And it's named uh, other things in different cultures. And then also, uh, when she mentioned about, you know, um, God is not telling you to have high self-esteem and all this other stuff, uh, that's uh, where this doctrine of loving yourself comes from. It comes from these new age pagan ideas that man is good. We can just bring out the goodness of man if you just realize that you're a God or you work yourself there. But loving you can't love anybody else unless you love yourself. That's all the same thing. It's just they're not telling you the the idea behind it. And some people just don't know. They just piggyback on what they hear and go along with it. And this also dovetails into the idea of karma. Karma is not, you know, um, what you give off, you're going to get back. And, you know, if you do bad, you get back bad. And if you do good, you get back good. It, karma is really reincarnation so they 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 kind of truncate that into this saying because in the reincarnation thing you were you're supposedly born perfect and then you messed up along the line so now you have to come back and do get it right get it right until you get it right you won't um, um, become a god or you know go back to perfection you know, so that's that's the idea behind reincarnation and, and karma is reincarnation. You can go look that up for yourself. And um, finally, when she was talking about breathing prayer and all this stuff, that also falls into the line of contemplative prayer. If you really look behind, behind the meaning of contemplative prayer, which is um, being promoted through a lot of charismatic groups, you will see that there's a danger behind that, too. And you could do, you know, your research on that. But I just wanted to point out these things and make you aware of them. And so here ends my reading. And I hope you got something from this and that this did equip you to spread the word, spread the gospel, um, speak to anyone that you love that might be involved in this stuff. And uh, there's more and there's more and there's more. There's always more. But at least you have some sort of foundation to start the um to engage in the conversation this is chris from don't let them burn and remember out there if you're a christian preach the gospel 
And if you're not saved and you're listening to this and you're caught up in this or anything else that's ungodly, you already belong to Satan. You're already condemned. No one is condemning. You're already condemned. Just go read um, John, around John 3, 16, around there, 16, 17. You know, it, it says that you're already condemned. So you belong to Satan, and you want to really get a relationship with God. And the only way to do that is to accept Jesus Christ as your Savior. You know, uh, it doesn't take you being in a church service or, you know, saying some predetermined prayer. If you understand the gospel, basically you're a sinner. God sent his, his only son, Jesus Christ, in human flesh to sacrifice himself on the cross for not me or anyone that calls himself a Christian, for the whole human race because the sin imputed on Adam could only be cleansed through his sacrifice, his blood. And so he died, and then three days later, he resurrected, and the resurrection is the cornerstone for Christianity. Without the resurrection, we have nothing. And so that is, it's documented that he resurrected. The point is, he has, you have a free gift to accept. He died for you, for me, for everyone, and that's the only way to God, the Father. It's the only way. Nothing else will bring you happiness until you come to Jesus. You don't find God, he finds you. And you're not listening to this program by accident. Imagine, no matter what you've done, take a look at your life, all the bad things. It's not even that that's, that condemns you, it's, it's the original sin. But you can get forgiven for all of that, even the ones that you're thinking about, the ones that you, you think that, oh my goodness, I've done this, I've, I've done that. There's no way God can love me. That's a lie from the devil. And he doesn't want you to come to Jesus. So I pray that your heart moves by this message. This is the gospel message. And as I always say, don't let them burn. I want you to think of a time when you had control over your mind. Now think of a time when you let anything into your subconscious. Have we been led to a critical junction by unseen forces? What does this mean for the future of mankind? What have you been trained to believe about UFOs and aliens? Have you been deceived? Are you waiting for something to show up? In this groundbreaking documentary film, the veil will be lifted, your eyes will be open, as the truth is exposed like never before. We are not alone, but they are not what you think. Disclosure is near, so what will be the event? The one event that will fool a global population in the last days? Find out soon as we uncover the alien deception. Entertainment Frontlines. If you like our videos, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the notification bell to get all our frequent updates.